Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the south of England. It's round nine of the FIA Motocross World Championship, the MXGP of Great Britain at the historic Matterley Basin Circuit. Just under 2,000 metres long, we sit about five miles east to the city of uh, Winchester in Hampshire. And uh, the circuit itself sitting in a shallow valley, sprawling across a massive open space. A great carnival atmosphere here. A lot of people packing the racetrack here. And why wouldn't you? It's a beautiful summer's day here, 25 degrees or thereabouts. And they're so far enjoying some of the best racing of the season. In terms of uh, British Grand Prix, so far we've had uh, 107 different winners over the years. The first Grand Prix ever held in Great Britain uh, was 1957. That was won by Jeff Smith on a 500cc BSA. But here at Matterley, in the more recent history, uh, David Philipparts was the first ever winner here uh, in MX2 on a KTM in 2006, swiftly followed by Stefan Everts in MX1 for Yamaha. Tony Cairoli, though, the most successful British Grand Prix winner in history. And uh, he's rucked up uh, quite a few in total. Six, to be exact. But before we go anywhere, though, let's take a quick look. Uh... This weekend, we had the chance to speak to the Rockstar Energy Hispana factory racing team to see what they had to say about the season so far. The story uh, with Husqvarna started uh, in 2000 when I started with KTM in the factory and because I was world champion in 93. They started with me as team manager in the MX2 team factory Husqvarna. Our bike, what we use uh, now, it's actually a production bike for 2019 with a lot of changes. The riders were very satisfied, was happy with how the bike was handling, the power. It was uh, for us a good step in a good direction, for sure we did a lot of testing. But at this point, at this moment, uh, yeah, I think everything looks very promising. Thomas, just tell us what's the feeling in the team and with your teammate? Me and TKO, we get along really well. Um, do some training together and yeah, give each other a hard time between the motos, so it's really good. and. Um, also with all the mechanics and everyone, even when we have a, a bad weekend or a bad race, they're there to build me back up, they're not negative on me, so um, it's really good to have a team like that behind you just building you up all the time. Thomas Covington, he was winning the GP. I think he can, the next half of the season, he can do better. For Thomas Covington, I think in the moment, you know, coming from a knee injury in the winter, it's different from, from person to person how you react to injuries and how fast you can get back. But you know, you cannot rewind time, so right now it's just to try and make that difficult period as short as possible. And, and he's working hard and he's doing everything he can, and hopefully he'll be back where he belongs really soon. Last year at the Nations, you were on a 450. Are you looking forward to, to moving up? I love the 450. I always have uh, raced on it quite a bit when I was amateur back in the States. And um, I think that's one reason they put me on the 450 here. And I feel like my riding style really suits it, you know. Um, I'm more of a relaxed rider, not really. <laughs> doesn't look like I'm pushing too hard most of the time. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to riding the 450 one day. Thomas Covington's positives is definitely his raw speed and you know also things that he can pull out of the hat you know uh, last lap charges and you don't see that a lot in this sport you know to come like really really pass on the last lap or the last corner. Thomas uh, Carlson he came from the European I saw that uh, there was a lot of potential possible and that's why we sign him for the year after. TKO's positives will be his focus, his, uh, his mental strength, his weak points, I would say also his focus sometimes because he, you can also be too focused and sometimes you need to, in a way, to think about other stuff to keep your batteries charged and to keep you fresh and things like that. Would you say you're a more hard pack rider or more of a sand rider? To be honest, I'm not quite sure. I like both. Uh, they're really technical, both of them, and each their, each their way, and uh, maybe I excel a little bit more in the sand and I can use my height a little bit more. Now, you won in Latvia last year. You repeated your performance this year. What is it about that track, do you think, that suits you so much? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's just a great, fun track. I really like how it is there and how the dirt is, just the whole layout, and uh, yeah, it's just something that suits me well. I can't explain what it is that made me do the same exact result two years in a row, but yeah, I don't complain about it.
Right, let's go down to the grid. Uh, Lisa Lane and caught up with former world champion Christoph Porcel, but before that, Glenn Koldenhoff. Hello and welcome to the start of the first MXGP race of the day. Now, we've had some great action in that first race and I'm sure there's more to come for the rest of the day. Now, I want to speak to one of the main protagonists of the qualifying session yesterday. It's Glenn Koldenoff, running in second pretty much a lot of that qualifying race. Uh, one of the best results of the year for you. You finished in third. Uh, you must be pretty pleased with that result. Yeah, sure. You know, I uh, had a good day yesterday, had a good start and uh, I could follow straight away from the beginning. Um, Tony was gone pretty quickly and... Uh, yeah, like you say, I was for a long time in second, so yeah. it's always good to be in front and it's good for the confidence and uh, I'm looking forward to go out now. Well, we're approaching the halfway stage of the season already. I don't know where the time's gone. Um, looking back on the first few rounds, how do you think your season's gone so far? I think is isn't that bad, you know. Um, I most of the time stay inside uh, of the top ten, and uh, except Russia, I had a crash in the first moto and didn't score any points. So, um, But other than that, you know, I'm consistent in yeah. top eight, I would say, and... Um, but I want to have that, that podium spot once, you know. Uh, I've been looking for that uh, all uh, from the beginning, let's say, and um, I'm looking forward to do that here. Okay, well, have a good race. Thank you, Glenn. The next guest I'd like to speak to is Christophe Brossel, former rider, but this weekend you're actually here as an ambassador for Just One, aren't you? The very first ambassador. Uh, so what have you been doing this weekend? I just, uh, you know, I work for Just One now, so I represent the brand and I'm the ambassador as a world champion and the US champion. So, uh, it, you know, it's good to uh, represent a brand that I've been working for for four years now. Yeah. So I enjoy going to the GPs again and uh, I'm back in Europe, so it, it feels good to be back. Now, especially in this MXGP class, there's been some very close racing between Cairoli and Hurlings. What's your take on that? How do you think that's going to pan out? And do you think there are any other riders that can match their speed? Uh, you know, the, the KTM uh, guys are very, very fast. Uh, Tony is, is my very good friend, so... Uh, yeah. I'm always cheering for him, but um, Jeffrey has been amazing this year, and uh, you know I think uh, Tony is trying every weekend to kind of step it up. Uh, hopefully, he can maybe beat him today because yesterday he was very very fast and won by 20 seconds. And uh, otherwise, uh, all the other guys are kind of going in the right direction. We saw the Sao in Russia where he won the GP, so. I think uh, you know the, the the two KTM are very fast, but I think there's something to do for the other guys where they can maybe get a good start and win the GP like Clement did in uh, in Russia. Okay, well thanks, Christoph. Enjoy your day, and I hope to see you at other MXGP events. Yep. Thank Christoph for sale there. Good luck to all the guys. It's time for MXGP race one. As the championship stay, uh, approaches the halfway stage then, let's take a look at the uh, championship standings for MXGP after eight rounds. Jeffrey Hurlings, 48 points clear of his teammate Tony Cairoli to sell 60 points further back in third. Paul Land just 20 behind the Belgian, and then Roman Fevre, three adrift of Paul Land. And we've got Geiser, Kolonov, Van Horovic, Siwa, and Julian Lieber. Here's how the MXGP qualifying race panned out on Saturday, though. Paul Land squeezed to the inside. There's the two KTMs charged downhill, but it was Cairoli leading Koldenhoff. Hurlings quickly got into third and then just spun out. Had to give way to Tim Geiser, who maintained that third position. Anstey was in fifth place at that point. As they charge downhill, Tommy Searle also made a great start for bike at DRT Kawasaki as Geiser looked to move into second early on. Cairoli was starting to pull clear at the head of the field. Kodnoff was looking solid in second. Geiser pushing him in third, though. Just behind Roman Fevre was uh, Gautier Paul Anne, but then he lost out to Clement de Salle. De Salle charged up into eighth place. Cairoli looked very comfortable on the uh, hard conditions here at Matali, a place that he's won on plenty of times in the past. Hurling Zone started to get second wind as the race went on. Anstey and Searle, the two Brits, right where they wanted to be in fifth and sixth place. Koldenhoff almost lost out to Geiser, but he just dug his elbows out there and ran the Slovenian wide as he maintained that second position on what was a very fast racetrack indeed. 
De Sal made his way past Jeremy Van Horbeek to move up into seventh place around about the halfway mark as Anstey fell from fifth around the same time. That let his teammate through, Gautier Paulin. Paulin would eventually come home in sixth place. He found his way past Jeremy Van Horbeek with about two laps to go and then Tommy Searle on the final lap. But Hurlings was starting to get interested in challenging for a top three finish and maybe even better. Carved a new line through the first turn as he went past Tim Geiser. That put the bullet into third with three laps to go. And then the following lap, he went after his teammate, Glenn Koldenoff, sent him to the outside. Hurlings went to the inside, kept it nice and low on the step down. And just like that, he was in the second position. But Tony Cairoli was already too far ahead. Paul Ann made a move on Jeremy Van Horbeek. Van Horbeek pretty much let him have it. Still riding a little bit secondhand was the Monster Energy Yamaha rider. Cairoli in no mood for messing around. No mood for playing games either. And the Red Bull KTM rider eventually came home 20 seconds clear of Jeffrey Hurlings in the qualifying race. It was a Claudio Di Carli double qualifying victory with Prado winning in the qualifying race earlier on in the day. Kai Rowley bringing it home for KTM and it was a 1-2-3 for Red Bull KTM in the qualifying race in MXGP. Take a look at how the riders go to the line, though, for MXGP race one. Red Bull KTMs, Kai Rowley, Hurlings, and Koldenoff go to the line first. And then we have Tim Geiser, Clement de Sal, Gautier Paulin, Tommy Searle, Jeremy Van Horbeek, Max Anstey, and Roman Fevre. Kenny Bobashev was 11th. Alex Lapino, Jeremy Siwa, Julian Lieber. Uh, Siwa had a rock in the face, actually, through the goggles. So, uh, big rock, according to uh, team owner, Louis. Jeffrey Hurlings, though, lines up. Had a big crash, actually. Uh, if you've seen his uh, Instagram page, on his story, he put a, uh, a video on there. He high-sided coming out of the turn, the long uphill towards the finish. And that falls away on the exit of the turn. He uh, high-sided over the top, through the front door, landed awkwardly, could have easily been a collarbone, but uh, I'm not saying he was riding battered and bruised, but certainly wouldn't have helped yesterday, but not making excuses, and nor will he, I guess. Tommy Searle, the bike at DRT, Kawasaki rider, though. He'll be hoping for big things here. Seventh in the qualifying race yesterday. Obviously, the team base is uh, not far from here. Place he knows very well, but Tommy, of course, based up in the Midlands. Glenn Koldenoff, third in the qualifying race yesterday. Come on to Sal. He's having a, a fairly good year this year. He's already won one Grand Prix. That was, of course, Russia. Been on the podium, what, four times now? Twice third, a second and a win. Fourth, the last two Grand Prix. And Roman Fevre definitely riding battered and bruised ankle injuries and wrist injuries after uh, separate incidents in Latvia and Germany. But he'll soldier on. He's got his home Grand Prix in a week's time at saint jean d'Angely. What about Max Anstey? The last time he came here, he was victorious. Two wins at the Motocross of Nations in October of 2017. Gautier Paulin, as focused as ever. MXGP race one. The ninth round of the FI Motocross World Championship. The MXGP of Great Britain here at Matley Basin. So far in this particular circuit, we've had 14 different winners. Jeffrey Hurlings was victorious here in MX2 the last time we came here. Tim Geiser in MXGP on a Honda. And uh, for Geiser, it was uh, pretty sweet because for the Slovenian, it was a uh, pretty emphatic victory for him as well. But the gate about the drop here for MXGP race one. And uh, Tommy Searle looking like he was in neutral there, had to jam it down, and that's cost him as well as he gets out of the gate. He'll hold a nice tight line, though, looking for the foxhole shot. And it will be Kai Rowley, I think, that grabs that foxhole shot. Ahead of uh, well, two teammates, Koldenhoff and uh, Hurlings, and Hurlings puts a squeeze on his Dutch teammate. Still sits there in third, though. 
Kai Rowling going to be on nine. Fox Hole shots if it was him that grabbed it, and of course, Serling's striking early. He knows from the form of Kai Rowley yesterday, he can't afford to let him get the jump on him, and that's exactly what he's got. So it's down to these two now just to try and sort themselves out. But Geiser in there in fourth, Tommy Searle, what a recovery from him! He's in fifth place, he's got to sell around the outside. Apparently, those two had a bit of a, uh, a word after the qualifying race yesterday, not sure what about. Searle has got Fevre. Alongside him, and it's the Montrellis Yamaha, fourth, fifth, Searle, so, trying to hang on here at the early stages, and Paulan is down. Paulan has been upside down, somewhere on the racetrack, not sure where exactly, but not what he wanted. Of course, he was on the podium here for France last year, when they were crowned world champions for the fifth time. Through the waves. Ah, oh, Searle couldn't get the distance through there. Fevre's gone by. Tassau's gone by. But it's Cairoli who leads away. Hurling's second. Geiser now up in the third with that move on. Koltnoff looks like they've put some uh, grease down there on the circuit. On that particular part of the racetrack, riders slipping and sliding around all over the place. And you saw from Paul Ann, he was also looking a little bit covered in the black stuff. So. Obviously, uh, losing traction somewhere out on track, but. Geiser taking two passes. Goes from fourth to second. And I tell you what, he looked across at Jeffrey Hurling's end as if to say, How dare you? On the face of that jump, that was a close call between Hurling's and Geiser. He was there in second briefly, was Tim Geiser. All happening here on the opening lap of MXGP race one. But it's Cairoli who leads, and he would love Geiser to get involved in this little battle to keep her. Uh, Hurling's behind him. Right, there's Kai Rowling. Hurling second, Geiser third, Koldenoff four, De Salis fifth, Fevre sixth, Tommy Searle seventh, Van Horvick eighth, Siwa is ninth, Lieber ten, Pobreshev eleven, twelve for Lupino, Simpson thirteen, Nagel fourteen, Monticelli is in fifteenth place. Then we've got Irwin, Gio, Dupre, Leo, and Kevin Strybos, Jasikonis, Anstey twenty second, Paulan over the line now in thirty third place. Would love to see where he fell on the opening lap. Oh, Lupino's down. That's uh, dropping onto the start straight. How has he gone down there? That is a strange crash. Oh, well. He'll pick himself up. He was not 12th, though. Hurling's trying to break free from Tim Geiser. The Slovenian giving the uh, the Dutchman a little bit of elbow juice earlier on in the race. But it looks like it's settled down ever so slightly at the moment. All right, Siwa alongside Searle. So the Wilvo Yamaha rider, number 91. A little bit greasy on takeoff there, Jeremy. Quadding uphill. I tell you what, the danger there, actually, jumping up the quad now, is if you're a little bit short, there's ruts on the takeoff where the MX2 guys haven't been. Uh, making the quad. They've been going 3 1 and uh, Siwa gets pushed to the outside there by Searle. These guys were tripling in there yesterday. There's obviously a reason why they're not today. It might be because of that new line that's been uh, handcrafted around the inside there in that very tight turn 13. Taking away the option to go wide as Koldenhoff looks to hang on to fourth place here from the hard charge in Belgium on the Monster Energy Kawasaki. Clement de Salle, number 25. Both riders looked a little bit juicing like there as they flew through the air, a little bit rigid. But the Sal makes the pass and he makes it stick. Goes after Tim Geiser, just ahead of him, with Team HRC, 243 in, in uh, third place. Fevre closing in behind them. Hurling sets the fastest lap of the race, though, by about a tenth of a second compared to Tony Cairoli. The gap still 1.6 seconds. Both these guys, in fact, the first three guys have all won around this Matty Basin circuit. And so too has De Salle and Koldenhoff. Not very rare that, uh, very rarely that happens. The first five guys in the race, all Grand Prix winners around this racetrack. Right, dropping down. 
Right, so here is uh, Geiser heading uphill. Oh, Simpson dropping under the start. So uh, Sean Simpson, 24, was in 12th place, obviously losing some positions there. Must be a little bit slick as they drop under the start straight then. Geiser going back after the 84. I worry, just starting to slip away a little bit. The gap was about 1.6 seconds. And the pace high. Man down at the bottom of the hill. In that right hand turn, uh, turn seven. Who was that? Soon find out. Uh, it might have been Seawer actually. Yeah, Tommy Searle goes to the inside. Oh, he just lost the ground. Lost traction all by himself, Jeremy Seawer. So Seawer out of nine. I think Lieber and Bobrachev both went by him. Fevra and uh, his Monster Energy Yamaha teammate going through six and seven. And there's Siwa just behind him, Max Nagel for TM Factory Racing, number 12. As Fevra goes after Koldanov. Up on the pegs, very technical part of the racetrack, but not for Roman Fevra. Up on the pegs as late as possible, then sat down, got on the gas, and just breezed past Glenn Koldanov. Koldanov, of course, a winner here in 2013 in MX2 for standing construct KTM. Took the uh, the Belgian team their first ever Grand Prix victory. Valentin Guillot, who is uh, back racing this weekend. He uh, brought them the next one. He's in 14th, actually. He broke his leg in January, training at Red Sand. Did uh, Valentin Guillo. Gap now, 1.7 seconds. Cairoli, though, the fastest man on track that time around, a 1.24.1, fastest lap of the race. Yeah, Valentin Guillo, 2015, winning here for Standing Construct Yamaha. In MX2. Good to see him out on track. 14th in the uh, standings at the moment on his standing construct KTM. Great to have them all back racing this week. And uh, Kevin Strybos in 20th position, not making a great start. Kai Rowley, again, he knows he can't afford any mistakes. His concentration levels have to be at 120% out here. He knows how tough a character and teammate he has in the form of Jeffrey Hurlings. Looked masterful yesterday. It's difficult for, to predict, though, who can win between these two. When Cairoli's on his game like he is now, like he was yesterday, it takes a very, very brave man to bet against him. But one thing for sure, a little bubble like that, though, could change things. But one thing for sure, you know his teammate is going to be pushing just as hard as he is. And Geiser is not being left behind either. Look, there he is in the background, but... Uh, Gradually starting to pull clear from the Team HRC rider. The two KTMs here. To Sal in fourth, Fevre fifth, Koldanov and Horvick Searle in eighth, Bobrachev nine, and Julian Lieber, the second of the Monster Energy Karasakis, is in tenth. Twenty-one minutes plus two laps to go. MXGP race one here. It's the ninth round of the FIM Motocross World Championship, the MXGP of Great Britain at Matali Basin. As we hit the line a uh, lap ago at the end of lap two, Tony Cairoli was the fastest man on track, fastest lap of the race with 2.24.1 compared to a 24.2 of Hurlings, and they were 1.7 seconds apart. So Geiser on Hurlings, that was on the very first lap, but then Hurlings immediately responded. Geiser didn't like that. Right, the gap now between first and second, 1.4, because Hurlings sets the fastest lap of the race. It was a 2.23.0 for Kai Rowling, 2.22.8 for Jeffrey Hurlings. 23.3 for Geiser, he's now three seconds behind Hurlings, four off for Kai Rowling, here he is in third place. The Team HRC, the double race winner, Last time we came here, back in uh, 2016, Tim Geiser. But once again, we've got the two Katooms up front. The Sal is fourth, Fevre is fifth. There was a nice little line I saw uh, Hurling's use at the top of the hill where you go over the, uh, the double left to right over on the far side of the circuit. 
through the long sweeper where Geiser found his way past uh, on the opening lap. And just as he hit the braking bumps in the corner, he just pushes down on the front end, picks the front end up and just glides over those little braking bumps there. Whether he'll do it again this time around or not, but nice to come through there. He fell here, remember, in the uh, motocross nations. Lost the front end on uh, landing. Have a quick look down the order. Uh, Van Horvitz, seven. Searle, eight. Pobrechef, nine. Lieber, ten. Jeremy Seaworth for Wilbur Yamaha is 11. The factory TM of Nagel is 12. The Itachi Asa KTM of Graham Irwin back from uh, being burned alive by his bike at uh, a British Championship round a few weeks ago. That's why he's been missing in action. Uh, 13. Valentin Gio for standing construct 14. And Steve. Down there, number 99 in 18th place. His dad was in the wars yesterday as well. AJ just behind him. Almunas Jasakonis. So he's just moved up into 17th place then with AJ behind him and uh, ahead. Uh, was that the 141? I think it was. Maxim Dupre. There's Bobrashev going through on the white Suzuki. Number 777 for Boss GP. There is Dupre. So Dupre, 141 in 16th position. Good to see Valentin Gio back there. Number 92 on his standing construct. KTM. Has he made a mistake or is he still there? Yeah, he's in 14th place still. Or he was. So Kai Rowley, all of a sudden, has uh, just blown this one apart. 2.21.8, fastest lap of the race. A full second quicker than Hurlins that time around. And all of a sudden, the gap is two and a half seconds. Hurlins wouldn't have seen that one coming. Obviously feels very comfortable around here, doesn't he? We go to the hard pack of Saint-Jean d'Angeli in a week's time as well. And then Ottaviano, where these two were lighting the fuse and uh, causing all kinds of uh, fireworks a year ago. Back the two KTMs then battling away. You've got the Ducali garage and then you've got the, uh, the, the Dutch side, of which uh, Jeffrey Hurlings resides, of course. And uh, here's his team manager, Dirk Grubel. We'll bring that in just a moment. Of course, uh, keeping an eye on what's going on here with, with Hurlings and Koldenhoff, those two circulating in second and sixth position. He has got a job to do down there. Slight mistake there from uh, the number 84 as he gets out of that turn. Lost both feet off the foot pegs. Didn't stop him from seat bouncing, no. Hasn't cost him any time, and another wobble there as he continues to push after the 222 of Kai Rowley. Lost a little bit of uh, traction there in that right-hand turn. Again, just making one or two little errors. I would fancy this gap goes out to more than three seconds at the end of this fifth lap. Right, let's go down to the pit lane now. Here is Dirk Grubel. Dirk, once again, there's a KTM one and two. Tony's really strong on this track. He got a fantastic start. He's actually extending that gap. What do you think is going to happen? Well, Tony's riding at his best at the moment, but uh, Jeffrey doesn't let him go. As we can see, he just stays very close and watches him. And the race is long, and I'm sure uh, he's, he's just preparing for a move. Thank you, good luck. 3.079, so just one or two little mistakes creeping in the Hurlings game on lap five. There's a loud Kyro just to extend that gap ever so slightly. It might only be another half a second or maybe six tenths, something like that. But psychologically, both riders will see that. Now, both Kyro will try to manage that gap. Jeffrey Hurlings will try and close that gap down. And if he's uh, already making one or two little errors now, Kyroli will be uh, hoping that those errors continue during the race just to help him extend that lead over the three-time NX2 world champion. Tim Geiser, three seconds down, who sets his fastest lap of the race, a 2.23.0 on lap five. The team HRC, he's in third place, but he's uh, got six seconds in hand over the Monster Energy Kawasaki of Clermont de Salle of Belgium. Roman Febvre's Monster Energy Yamaha is about three seconds further back, but he was uh, quicker than uh, de Salle ahead of him. 
to the tune of about three quarters of a second. So is Febra looking at uh, a top four position here in the closing stages or the second half of this race? There is Roman Febra, 461. Got his first ever race win and podium here in 2015, the year that he won the MXGP title, of course. A week later, we went to France at Villar Suze Co and he wrapped up his first ever Grand Prix victory. And that then was uh, all she wrote for Roman Fevre because from there he went on a win streak. He was winning race after race, GP after GP, and was eventually crown world champion at Assen in the Netherlands at the final round. It's been a little bit up and down for him since then, uh, starting with a big crash here uh, in 2016 in the qualifying race. And he's had uh, a catalogue of problems here uh, during the year, sorry. That's just kept him off the podium or out of the top positions. But Jeremy Siwa looking to find his way past the 777 of Evgeny Bobrashev. No one tripling there. Yesterday, that was all the hot line, even the 300 riders. Some of them were getting around the outside. Some 250 European riders were doing it as well. They were able to go to the outside. Slingshot, triple, triple, single but not seeing it in the race. Obviously, they don't want to leave the door open because uh, you can go from the inside to the outside, close down the line, but if you're behind, certainly you can uh, utilise it, possibly. Here's Koldenhoff. Or is it Hurlings? Koldenhoff. So, Koldenhoff. He'll hit the line in sixth place for Red Bull KTM. looking to improve his season at the moment. He's down in seventh, as we heard on the grid. He's sort of uh, top eight, top nine, but he really wants to be fighting for podiums and top fives, really. Fevre getting the all thumbs up, though, from his man down there, down in pit lane. That's the gap back to Koldenhoff, you can see, and then at the top of the hill, uh, Clement and Sal, about three seconds further up the track just on the tabletop, right on that plateau. Now, DeSalle was a 25-4, Fevre a 24-25-6 uh, that time around. Give you a rundown with 12 minutes to go then. Tony Cairoli, 3.2 seconds clear of Jeffrey Hurlings at the moment. Hurlings setting his fastest lap of the race. And uh, that was a 2.22-1 compared to a 21.9 of Cairoli. Uh, Geiser is third, five seconds further back. Then we've got DeSalle and Fevre here on his blue monster and his Yamaha in fifth. Koldenhoff is sixth. Van Horvitz, seventh. Tommy Searle for bike at DRT. Kawasaki is eighth. Julian Lieber, nine. And Jeremy Siwa is tenth. Genny Bobrashev, 11, Max Nagel, 12, Graham Irwin, 13, Valentin Gio, 14, 15 for Tanel Leop, 16, Max Anstey, 17, Maxime Dupre, Alminas Jassikonis, Kevin Strivos and Sean Simpson round out the top 20. Gauthier Paulin, who fell on the opening lap, is now on the fringe of the points in 21st place, but uh, again, a couple seconds adrift of Simpson. And behind him, he's got Monticelli, Jose Boutron, Petar Petrov, and the rest. A little bit short there, coming into land for the Wilmo Yamaha of number 91, who's getting a little bit loose through that uphill right-hander. The fast sweeping turn 15 for Jeremy Sewer as he goes after the 33 of Julian Libra on his Monster Energy Kawasaki. These two fighting over ninth place with 11 minutes plus two laps to go. Both of these are tough customers. Tommy Searle at the top of the hill on his monster on his uh, bike at DRT Kawasaki, uh, closely followed by Julian Lieber and Jeremy Siwa. Eighth, ninth, and tenth. And uh, a slight mistake there from Siwa through the final turn. Takes a look across, wants to see exactly what's going on ahead of him. Well, if he did look across, then he'll see that Roman Fevre and Glenn Coldenoff are over there somewhere. So too, Jeremy Van Horvick. Then there's about a three second gap back to Tommy Searle. Goes from bad to worse for these two, doesn't it? Gauthier Paulin and Sean Simpson. Those two were fighting over 20th and 21st place, so not sure exactly what happened there or if there was any blame or if one rider crashed and the other one ran into him, but picking themselves up and rejoining the race. 
I think Paulant, amidst all that, did manage to grab a position from Sean Simpson. So he's now in 20th place, Simpson down in 21st. Being told to be smart. He won't give up either, though, Gautier Paulin. He knows that some uh, major points are going missing here. He's ordered 20 points down on DeSalle at the start of the race. DeSalle circulating in fourth. That's going to be 18 points to... Uh, <laughs> see that again. Uh, to the one point that Gautier Paulin currently occupies in that 20th position. He can just light up the back end there on that step down, or did he just catch the edge of the track where it was just dry dirt? Made it look more spectacular than it was. Be smart. That was the mechanics messages, but uh, just overrunning at the bottom of the hill there, Paul Ant. As he tries desperately to make up lost ground after that fall on race one, uh, on lap one. Tyroli, fastest lap of the race on lap eight, a 21-7, 22-1 for Hurley. At 22-1-11, it's all the twos and all the ones for his pursuer. As this guy, like an old wine, gets better with age, clearly. 3.3 3 seconds now, the gap between him and his Dutch teammate. That's the gap. Neither one of them can back off. He's in no time at all. You'll see a, a change in position because uh, Kyroli can't afford to relax. Hurlings will be all over him. Hurlings can't afford to relax either, really. He wouldn't want to. He'll believe that, just continue the chase, continue to push, put the pressure on, and hope for the mistake. But so far, it hasn't been, uh, it hasn't come from this guy here. It's looking good though, isn't it? Really good. He had an off weekend in Germany two weeks ago, a sixth and a fifth. Kept him off the podium, sixth overall as well. And up until that point, only these two were 100% podium finishers at all eight rounds. And the talk of the paddock at the moment is Kairoli has to step it up now, otherwise that gap is going to get too big. It's already 48, that'll come down to 45. After race one if it stays like this, but never write this man off. Or oh, that guy, Tim Geiser. He could still spring a, a surprise result in moto number two. The MX2 and MXGP world champion. Tim Geiser just looks solid, doesn't he? But at the moment, the other two riders on the KTMs, just a little bit more... Uh, about their game at the moment. They are head and shoulders above everybody else at the moment on, the, on a more regular basis. Yes, to Sal won in, in Russia. Of course he did. And he did it with the race win as well. Seawork getting closer to Julian Lieber. Continue to fight over ninth place. Tommy Searle about four seconds ahead of them. There he is in the opposite direction now. Searle trying to close down Jerry Mann, the Jerry Van Horvick show. See, we're getting close. Very close. Lieber will know that he's there. So the Monster Energy Kawasaki rider, number 33, doing his best to fend off the 91 Wilbo Yamaha. Searle getting closer to Van Horvick as well, who's riding pretty much with uh, one shoulder this weekend after his crash in Germany. So Cairoli, 3.2 seconds clear of Hurlings. At the end of lap nine, we've got 5.20 on the clock, plus two laps. Geiser in third, out on his own. And then we have to Sal, then Fevre, about eight seconds further back. Koldenhoff, five seconds behind the Frenchman. Van Horbeek, seven seconds adrift. And then Searle, then this gap to here, 33, Lieber, and 91, Siwa.
highest end of the racetrack here onto the plateau. Or plunging downhill, so much happening with suspension there. Look, the subtle changes, the subtle undulations they drop down into there. Bike gets light, front end looses, uh, loosens up a little bit, the back end as well. But see where uh, a mistake from the 91. Nothing in it between them either, is there? Lieber continues to keep. See what at bay. Nice line there for Siwa. Just kept it on the flat. Used it to his advantage as well. Closes down just a little bit on the 33 of Lieber, but over the line. Oh, I tell you what. Hello, everybody. This just got tasty. Four minutes to go, plus two laps, and that gap is down from three something to 1.1. And Kai Rowley now on the ropes here in the closing stage to the next GP race one. This is what the fans wanted to see. This is what the neutral wants to see as well. They don't want to see Hurlings just disappear off, but they also want to see a good dogfight. Kai Rowley needs to win this one just to keep, not his championship alive, there's still a long way to go, of course there is, but just to maintain that focus and that motivation to believe that he can do it for a tenth time. Seth Hurlings would never give up. He doesn't, he never gives up. That's why he's so tough to beat but he's got himself right there in contention now and it's going to be uh, is it a matter of time was it a mistake from Kai Rowley a 2.25.3 compared to a 23.2 you'd have to suggest that it was a mistake gloves are off between the two Red Bull KTMs once again we've seen it a couple times this year where the pursuer number 84 has gone after the leader 2.22 and at the very end of the race, Argentina springs to mind. A nine-second gap with nine laps to go. And a look over the shoulder there for Cairoli. Wants to know exactly where Hurlings is. Up on the pegs, both riders. Oh, drops a leg there. Hurlings mid-turn. Nothing in that, though. No one tripling in. Oh, Tony. Oh, nice combination there for Kai Rowley, but he messes up. He went double, triple, double. And he just got stood up in the turn, puts himself under unnecessary pressure. He knows exactly what's at stake here. Three vital World Championship point gain, and oh, my word! Hurlings, what a move around the outside. Wow. Up on the pegs, he didn't even blink. And the speed in which he carried around there was just phenomenal. Watch this. Oh, and uh, Cairoli fights back immediately. That's what we want to see. Wow. Well, let's put those replays on hold for now. This one just got tastier. It's going to be three laps to go because 125, the lap here, 225. Kai Rowley and Hurlings at their absolute best. Round nine of the FIM Motocross World Championship. It was juicy at the beginning. We had a bit of a lull in terms of this battle for the lead mid-race, but it all came alive just a lap ago. We've seen a change for the lead twice on lap 11. Hurlings triples to the outside. He's going for the slingshot. He's going for the momentum, but the shortest route always prevails through there. But then Hurlings gets good drive up the hill, carries oh, much better corner speed at the top there. Cairoli drifting too wide for the second lap in, in succession. Does the inside line work for Cairoli? Yes, it does. Hurlings has had a sniff of the lead briefly. Cairoli's led every single 11 laps here. Doesn't want to relinquish it. Not now. Not so close to the chequered flag. He had 25 points pretty much in his pocket when he had a three-second advantage two laps ago. That got whittled down to 1.1. It was 0.4 as they crossed the line at the end of lap 11. And the fans are on their feet everywhere around this racetrack here at Matterley Basin. All 2,000 metres of it. There's that uh, double, triple, double combination. Not a lot in it, is there? Oh, you cannot predict the outcome of this race. 
Again, tight to the inside. The corner speed in which Hurley's carried round there up on the pegs a lap ago was absolutely insane. And there was a bobble there again from Kai Rowley, but Hurlings wasn't as efficient round there either as they start to hit traffic. Watch this. This was just a moment ago. Just got cross-rutted, had to leg his way round there. It's an off-camber turn there, remember. Blue flags being waved all over the place. Does Hurlings get up over the triple? Yes, he does, despite the back marker being right there. I think it was the 93 at Benson. Back markers looking over the shoulders, they know not to get involved as well. And Hurling's looking to make a move down the inside. Oh, he runs down into Kai Rowley. Oh! Whoa! That was coming. Hurling's charged down the inside. He had one thing on his mind, to run it down the inside of Kai Rowley. He shunted him, and then uh, as Kai Rowley was coming back, Watch this here. Well, this will be a big talking point. Hurling's on the brakes late, ran clean into the side. And then as Cairoli came back, boom. Well, that'll have the guys talking, that's for sure. Is it a racing incident, folks? Well, 50-50, which side of the fence are you sitting on? If you're a Hurling's fan, you'll say, yeah, racing incident. If you're a Cairoli fan, you'll say, give him the red card or whatever it is you want to do. But at the moment, Hurlings, it is who leads here. He took the lead on lap 12, uh, on lap 13. You heard the fans roar. I'm not sure if it was disapproval or if it was uh, in favour, but is Hurlings the villain once again like he was in 2012 here when he and, Kurt and uh, Tommy Searle were uh, shooting daggers at each other in MX2. He'll keep his head down and he'll just keep going. You be the judge. Two to go, lap and a half to go. Hurlings has uh, well, more than rattled the cage, that's for sure. Picks his way through the back markers. There's Kai Rowley in the background. Probably going to be about 15 seconds further back now, isn't it? And that was a hard hit for Kai Rowley as well. He hit the ground pretty hard. His body slammed to the ground. Oh, a little bit offline there as he came into land. There's Hurlings already on the step down. Right, take a look at the recap of the action between these two over the last couple of laps. Tony Cairoli was leading. Jeffrey Hurlings. This was the first move. This was the, the mistake where he got stood up. That allowed Hurlings to get close. Then, oh, the move around the outside, that was the best one. Then we cut away. That was the drag back up. So there was another overtake in between all of that. Very close. Then this was the one. Ran it down inside. Don't even know if they touched actually, first of all. But that was a hard hit to the ground. Final lap, 10.2 seconds between them. Gloves are well and truly off between these two. Yeah, pick your peak up, Tony. Well, the sting has definitely been uh, removed from a, a final lap showdown. We got that two laps ago, a lap and a half ago. Cairoli will just coast home. Hurlings will, all being well, pick up another win. 12 in the books so far for Jeffrey Hurlings. We win number 13. Unlucky for some, but... Wow, on the receiving end, Tony Cairoli. Meanwhile, back in third, Tim Geiser, Team HRC, as Hurling's up on the pegs. Just cruising round. Just got the wave section to go. And uh, about another eight or nine corners. Just trying to uh, ascertain the body language. Yeah, muted applause from the fans over there. Good quality racing, though. That's what we've got. That's more important. 
in MXGP. The battle materialising again, this time here at Matsley Basin. This time, or once again, between Cairoli and Hurlings. Hurlings getting the better of his teammate with about a lap of the race, a lap and a bit to go. Wow, what a moment, what a uh, twist to the result, to the final outcome of the race. I'm sure we'll be talking about that. The media centre will be a hive of activity. Replays will already be shown all over the world. But Jeffrey Ernest, he won't care about that. He likes the candles. He wins race one here at Matsley Basin. And it's a 13th race win in the books for the bullet. Tony Cairoli limps home in second position. And I tell you what, he'll be cool and calm for professional. He'll probably shake the hand of Hurlings at the end of the straight here if Hurlings hasn't already cleared off into the, uh, the winner's enclosure. Doesn't want to feel the wrath of the nine-time champ. But if they do shake hands, it'll all be in the, uh, the name of professionalism. Yeah, there we go. And I tell you what, I wonder if that was the ringmaster there, Mr Ingo Parch. See the body language from both look. Long word there from Ruben. Kudeluren, his uh, longtime friend and uh, practice mechanic and very instrumental in his day-to-day -day program, Jeffrey Hurlings. What a race. What an outcome. Not the result that Cairoli wanted, of course. Jeffrey Hurlings, though, takes another step and takes another 25 points. Controversial pass, possibly, but... What will Jeffrey Hurlings think of it? I wonder if Lisa's brave enough to ask the question to Jeffrey Hurlings. Here we go. Let's find out. Jeffrey Hurlings, another race win. Quite a controversial pass on your teammate at the end there. Just tell us from your point of view what happened. You know, the track is like Tushital, very tough to pass, but uh, I just did my, de my best and I never meant to, you know, get in touch because I'm one of the ri those riders who doesn't like to get in contact with other ones. So, um, well, he, when, I, when I passed him, I went so deep for the turn that my uh, front brake blocked and then I had to push it out and he passed me straight back. And then uh, he kind of blocked me and then for this I wanted to basically, you know, just get in front of him and make the turn stake. But we both went in the turn together and unfortunately we, we clipped each other. But uh, I'm sorry for that, you know, I never wanted to get in touch with him. But uh, it's also part of racing, so very happy with the uh, third motor race and good to get the first motor win under the belt. So looking forward to the second one. Good luck for the second race. Thank you. <laughs> I'm still, I've still got the images in my head of uh, Cairoli being body slammed to the ground there. Another epic contest between these two, but it was once again number 84, Jeffrey Hurlings, who came out on top, and I think it was Jeff Perrick down there uh, on the circuit PA that was saying, you know, he'll probably go back and have a cup of tea, Tony Cairoli, but he'll be stewing underneath his helmet, probably plotting some kind of revenge ahead of race two. But for now, Jeffrey Hurlings will sit back, he'll enjoy those 25 points, a 13th, uh, 12th race win of the season, and... Uh, well, 13th win of the year season, sorry, and uh, 25 points. We'll extend it to more than 50 now. It'll be 51 points. But it's Hurlings, Cairoli, Geiser, De Sal, Fevre, Koldenhoff, Van Horbink, and Libia top eight. Ninth for Tommy Searle, and uh, Gernie Bobrashev was 10. Max Nago, 11. Jeremy C were 12. Anstey, Gio, Jasikonis, Strybos, Dupre. Paul and 18. Erwin, 19. And Leok, your final point scorer. Championship now looks like this. Hurlings moves to 411. Cairoli on 360. Another three point gain for Jeffrey Hurlings to Sal. Stays third, but Fevre moves up to fourth now at the uh, expense of Gautier Paulin. So the battle of the French riders continues inside the top five. Take a look at these highlights then from MXGP race one. There was a lot going on in this one. Those guys are not disappointed, that's for sure. Gate drops over on this side, Tony Cairoli. Tommy Searle didn't make a great jump, but he was able to hang a nice tight line behind Jeffrey Hurlings through turn one. Possibly Tony Cairoli with the foxhole shot. We'll get that confirmed in a moment, but it was uh, Koldenhoff in second. Hurlings in third, Geiser in fourth. Hurlings ran wide, though. Geiser got up the inside, but not enough to uh, separate the three KTMs. Paul Ann went down somewhere, though, on this opening lap, and he was right at the back. 
De Salle and Koldenhoff though had their fun and games. De Salle got himself up inside the top four. Oh, there's Paulan. Paulan, wow. We never saw that originally, but that's uphill into uh, turn eight. He landed wrong, went down, and obviously got hit. He's in a very dangerous position there, but still towards the end of the lap. Hurlings and Geiser. Geiser went past momentarily. Lupino also fell. A freshly watered track. Simpson also went down the same place as Lupino a lap or so later. Siwa went down all by himself as he tried to go around the outside of Searle. Searle eventually came home in ninth place. Lots of action out on race on the racetrack as uh, Lima found his way past Bobrashev to an eventual eighth. But then uh, as Cairoli had about three seconds on Jeffrey Hurlings, everyone thought it was pretty much game, set and match, but not quite. The, the 84 had other ideas. Lieber nicely passed Siwa, uh, sorry, uh, Siwa nicely passed Bobrashev. And then uh, had one or two moments throughout the moto. Then, towards the end of the race, three laps to go. This was a sublime pass up on the pegs. Look at the corner speed around there. That was Hurlings going through to the lead. Kai Rowley fought back immediately on the very next uphill. Everyone had their hands on their heads. Even Gordon Crocker, trackside from Honda Europe. Cairoli snatched back the lead. And then at the end of the next straight, they touched, and then they more than touched. Cairoli was slammed to the ground with about a lap and a half to go. Cairoli was out of it. Hurling so went on to take win number 13 by 10 seconds. And that score, that gap doesn't do the whole thing justice, but it was Hurlings who takes the win. Cairoli second, Geiser, De Salt, Fevry, top five. Uh, Foxhole shot time. And uh, was it? Yeah, it was by about a week. Tony Cairoli now on nine. And he shows up. Nice little smile. But uh, inside, he'll be fuming, no doubt. His teammate Hurlings on three. Paul Ann on two. Same as Fevre. Sean Simpson on one. Whew. We have had some action here today at Matterley Basin in both MX2 and MXGP, all the European races as well. But let's sit back and enjoy some of those moments from MXGP Race 1. Explosive end to MXGP race one. Guess what? We're going to take a break for now and we'll be back at uh, four o'clock to do it all again. We'll see you then. Bye for now.